Um, yes, now we uh, go back from the transatlantic from the United uh, States. We go to Europe, we go to Italy, and we go even to Milano. So we have a real Milanese, <laughs> which, is, which is coming. Um, she, uh, uh, so, so I'm talking about the next speaker, which is Diana Saraceni. So she is uh, an engineer by training, but then for what reasons ever, and I'm sure she will explain it to us, she uh, did not never work, or not very long as, a, as an engineer, but she went to investment banking, which sounds perhaps as a bit strange as a, as a career move, but it is not, because these uh, investment banks, they buy the best uh, people from all different disciplines. And uh, I think in the, in the following career, what she did, she uh, uh, founded a company which is uh, the 360-degree capital partners uh, company. She's still um, a partner in this uh, company. And this company, as I understood it, um, I think we all understand uh, the three different elements. Perhaps she can bring us these 360, the capital and the partners uh, t t together, and I'm sure she will explain this uh, to us. But I think what is behind it, as I understood it, is that she is bringing uh, venture, capital, uh, venture capital to uh, new startup companies. And of course, this is not so easy. And she will have put a special emphasis on something which Bill also mentioned, that it is different whether you have a startup as a software company or a manufacturing company. It's much more expensive, much more uh, uh, um, capital intensive. So, uh, Diana, please come to the, come here. Thank you very much for being here. We are all very much looking forward. So what do I use to... Um... <laughs> I used to be an engineer. <laughs> so what do I use to turn the slides? Is it going by itself? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, uh, I, I'm home here. This is my hometown, so I, I think I should uh, welcome all of you that came from abroad. I hope you will enjoy a little bit of our city during these days. Let me now speak about venture capital. Uh, let me introduce uh, who we are, who is the company I, I co-founded uh, about uh, a little bit more than 10 years ago. Um, its name is 360 Capital Partners because we invest in all sectors. We had so far 300 million under management invested in uh, uh, a little bit more than 80 uh, companies, 80 startups all over Europe. Uh, we had uh, five different funds under management, um, uh, and um, we invested, as I said, in all over Europe a couple of times in the US and once in Israel, but our main focus uh, is Europe with Italy and France in particular. We backed 200, a little bit more than 200 founders, um, and uh, we are a small team, so overall we, our accumulated ex venture capital experience uh, sums up to 65 years. Our typical investment is anything between 500k euro dollar, whatever, to 5 million. Uh, out of uh, two main offices, one in Milan, one in Paris, but also with representation in Germany, uh, in Luxembourg and in Portugal. We invest mainly in three sectors, and I would say that this is where the entire industry mostly invests. Uh, above all is digital, we'll come back to that. We also invest in medical device uh, and industrial technologies. Um, there is one competition that's run every year where the second edition launched uh, very recently, which is 360 by 360, where we award every year uh, um, uh, one startup with 360 thousand dollars. A few of our success stories, not only because they, um, we are proud of those, uh, because they represented a, a very interesting financial return for us, but also because these were all companies where we invested when they were literally a couple of people companies, founding team looking for someone who believed in their idea that was ready to, uh, to bet a little bit in the, in the technology or in the uh, new business uh, idea and or we, that we backed and we uh, followed over time and uh, they, be they became then 
uh, success stories in terms of all the revenues, profits, and most importantly for us, which are financial investors, uh, in financial return for us. One for all, it's a Milanese um, a story that I like to mention. It's a company named Ux, which we co-founded together. We be back at the very early days, which this slide says Euro 500. It's, I'm sorry, it's not up to date. Today it's worth a couple of billions uh, on the Italian stock exchange. So it went from uh, a pure uh, project on paper to a company that's employing a few thousand employees all over the world and has a market cap of a couple of billion euro. Okay, I thought I would um, give my view of what is venture capital to the, uh, this audience. Uh, venture capital is really a run, uh, a race against time. Um, normally, when we um, meet entrepreneurs, they are setting up the company or they have just done so. Um, he, the entrepreneur has an idea and sets up the company. The second step is the seed stage, where the entrepreneur looks for a venture capital that gives cash in return of equity, in return of share, usually a minority stake to be precise. And this comes with a very small initial investment in the range, just to give you a, a range, in the range between 200,000 euro and, and 1 million. Um, there's an, another stage, which is more a growth stage, where there is, if the company achieved the, the, the famous milestone, there is a less number of share given out to venture capitalists in return of cash. But we're all, again, we're again in the numbers of minority stakes. Here, the growth stage can be funded with uh, tickets that are in the range between 1 and 10 million euro. Uh, and the last bit is the exit, of course, where we all get ready for either a listing, an initial public offering, or a trade sale. The company is sold to another bigger, usually, company uh, in its entirety, 100%. What happens is that all the shareholders, the entrepreneurs and the venture capitalists, as well as the employees that most of the time get stock option in exchange of taking the risk of coming into a startups, they all make money. If the story was successful, they all make a lot of money, of course. A few success stories of venture capital. You probably know all these brands. I just wanted to point out that not uh, that that venture capital is better known, maybe most likely associated with brands like Google, Skype, uh, eBay, which are, uh, if you allow me, manufacturing free uh, companies that are pure digital, where the manufacturing component is not very relevant. I just wanted to point out that companies where manufacturing is very important like Intel or medical device company like Medtronic, Intuitive Surgical, they, are, they were also backed by venture capital. Uh, and it's, it's less uh, a common association. Usually uh, venture capital is associated, uh, more recently at least, with the digital world. Uh, something that we have to do, and that's part of our job, and that is, you probably um, recognize, not an easy job, is the screening. Um, entrepreneurs with ideas that want to be backed by people with, by venture capitalists with cash, there are a certain number. So for a company like mine, for example, every year we receive 2,000 investment proposal. It's just Ideas sometimes is also out of the uh, university academies that promote the business plan competition and students that just send out the business plan with not, not being very convinced themselves. But as a result, it's a big number. We receive 2,000 every year proposal for investment. There's a screening which is key and is part of our job, which, comes, which brings from 2,000 to 300 the number of companies we m meet. And from 300 to 100, the company of company we really analyze. And then five companies are invested. There are a certain number among those who are not invested by us, not because we don't select them, but sometimes it does happen, of course, that they don't want us as a partner. We have to recognize this. They found a better money uh, with a better valuation from someone else. We dictate terms that are, may not be the best that the entrepreneurs found on the market. But it's a very, very selective process. This is uh, what I meant with this chart. 
And then after the selection, which, which makes itself about 50% of the value creation, then it's about building the company with entrepreneurs, so spending these famous six or seven years together to build a company, be patient, learn quickly, and then uh, allow the company to develop uh, and, and get to profitability, and uh, most importantly, to financial independence. So when the company doesn't need to raise more money, more equity, but is financially independent because finally generates cash, and most of the time, a lot of cash with innovation. Uh, main sector of venture capital, uh, this is, these are the, the areas that are more common. Uh, of course, on the top of the list, there, are, there is internet service, media entertainment, think of the Facebook, the social media phenomena, etc., uh, which goes with software. Uh, but immediately after, the other sectors that are interesting are energy and clean tech, where you have uh, things like energy storage, uh, waste, water treatment, uh, energy efficiency. These are the hot sectors where venture capitalists are looking for investment. Uh, but then medical technology is another area of great interest where advanced manufacturing is key. Think of robotics, think of all the uh, technologies that allow uh, patient remote control uh, and all those trends that are very key. Uh, pharma is also key uh, for the sector and absorbs about uh, 30, uh, 25% of the investment, at least in Europe. Uh, then also retail, which is less interesting for this conference, of course, and f financial services are area of interest, uh, where financial service doesn't mean a new bank, generating a new bank, but it's all about new business models that are enabled by the web or the application, the mobile uh, world, of course. Uh, and then new materials uh, is also, there is also a few interesting investment in that space. Um, a little bit about the European uh, venture capital outlook. This is, uh, I think, is the most controversial chart of my presentation because um, the, the, the topic is there is scarcity of capital. Uh, no question that two billion invested in 2013 uh, compare, uh, compare um, not, not very favorably with the 10 billion invested in the US. Uh, in the, at the same time, and 2,300 companies funded, given that not all of them will survive and will become success stories, isn't a great number. These numbers are done mainly in three, ca in three countries. Uh, in, the, in the order of importance, France is the most advanced countries in, uh, in venture capital deployment, then Germany and UK almost at the same level. Uh, where does the scarcity come from? It's the scarcity of private capital. There are investors that used to be investors in our fund that completely disappeared, bank and insurance. These were long-term investors that easily accepted the fact that the asset class is very liquid. They have to invest in funds and then wait for the startups to um, be exited, which means on, on average seven, seven years, as we mentioned before. Uh, well, these were um, uh, hardly beaten by uh, ratios like Basel III or Solvency II regulation, which uh, uh, basically um, reduce dramatically the capacity for this kind of investment for banks and insurance companies. Uh, at the same time, in the, in the turmoil conditions, um, long-term in general, long-term investment, uh, illiquid investment are perceived, as, are perceived as very high risk. So it becomes more and more difficult to raise private capital. On the other side, there are three phenomena which are helping the asset class and supporting the asset class. First of all, corporate venture is more and more um, uh, recognized that uh, because venture capital brings innovation and corporates want to understand some sector uh, that are um, wants to have a view, uh, closer view to some sector that are supposed to be the sector of the future, they invest in funds in a way to have access to the startups uh, that could become uh, the companies and the technology and could uh, of the future. And this is true again. It used to be the case 10 years ago. Um, very quickly, uh, most of the program very quickly di disappeared, but uh, these are very welcome for, into the ecosystem, of course. Now, the, most of the corporates are back with their corporate venture programs. Um, the other great help comes from the European Commission, 
uh, not only because of their program of investment into venture funds, but also the, the Horizon 2020 program, which provides uh, very interesting uh, uh, tools um, for startups to be able to apply and, and get funded also not only for technology development, but also for bringing technology into the market, which most of the time is the most difficult part for a startup. Uh, the third intervention uh, that gives uh, uh, the third topic to, to enable this asset class um, to, to get liquidity are, uh, comes, the, sorry, the uh, there are several programs local, the local authorities. Uh, above all, France has a very strong prog program, and this is why the reason the, the, um, uh, it's, it's a capital, uh, Paris is the capital probably in, in Europe of, uh, of uh, venture capital. Then uh, there's another example which is in, the, um, in, in Germany, Berlin, is, re is a really a place where the um, local authorities uh, promoted and generated in a couple of years uh, uh, from scratch an entire very favorable ecosystem for startups. Uh, Scandinavia is a much more stable environment where uh, local authorities in, in generally in Scandinavian companies intervene when there's a scarcity of capital very rapidly and generates um, uh, a stability of the cycles. And also uh, here and there in Italy, for example, some regions are, have specific programs to um, give uh, the first incentive to build up new startups to generate deal flow uh, and, and provide the first money to companies. So how do, um, one question for all, how do manufacturing startups uh, compete in this, comp in this context uh, for capital? First of all, as I mentioned, 50% of the investment are going into digital, uh, where the entrepreneur has an idea, sets up a company, and there, of course, there's nothing, there, there's very little, um, if not insignificant, impact on the manufacturing world, of course. It's, uh, um, it's all about, um, uh, it's all digital in, and, and, and immaterial. But the other two sectors, life science and industrial technology, I would say that the advanced manufacturing is key. Uh, and also because the products and innovation bring uh, high added value, there's no, well, most of the time, there's no, no much competition on cost. So at least to start with, initially the startups in the manufacturing environment, it's all um, pretty relaxed. What matters is quality and then cost cutting eventually with all the program of optimization would come at a very a much late, later stage in another decade. Uh, same for industrial technologies, same um, idea with the uh, concept that uh, innovation brings uh, high added value um, and companies are competing in innovation. Uh, there's one key thing which is true for manufacturing startups uh, comparing with the lighter structure. Um, the initial capital needed is not very different. This is uh, not obvious to know because in a manufacturing uh, company, you, of course you need, the, you need to fund the assets. But first of all, assets are fundable with different source of funding, and which helps equity and helps investors like us. Um, second, uh, digital companies uh, are also very capital intensive, more and more capital intensive. The, the intensity doesn't come from the fact that the company needs to buy assets, but comes from the fact that the, the company with no intellectual property to protect innovation needs to build a strong position. So the marketing budget of companies in the ICT world are just huge from day one. Much more, much more simple is for a company with patents on its innovation that has, can defend its position, its technology and its innovation with patents. It doesn't need to fight on the, on the web, for example, to build up a brand in a very short time. The very, the very difference, in my opinion, is not the quantity of capital then, but is the fact that revenues in manufacturing-based companies, we are deferred in times. So you will have to wait, while a digital company only needs to open up a website and will probably start generating revenues, even a, a, a small revenues day one, 
manufacturing company, you will have to wait two, three, maybe four years before it starts generating revenues. And this is the big difference and the big, percep the big difference in perception from us investors, which have to be a little bit more patient to see if it works or not. I think this is it, and I thank you for your attention. Here are my contact details. Uh, I'm happy to take your questions. Diana, thank you very much for sharing your experience uh, with us. I found it very impressive that only 0.25% of those whom you scrutinize we finally get money. That is really an extremely strong process. And then what I also found very interesting was the, that you, the difference between the different sectors and the capital intensity. Very fascinating. Thank you very much.